This is River Ivern. Years ago we had River Shen, the meme strategy who spends the whole game in the river ganking. But this guy took a meme and turned it into a strategy that got him all the way to challenger 1075 LP. Meet Ryvern, his account name that literally means River Ivern. And now challenger player who got there for the first time with this strategy. This is a completely new pick. He's not playing jungle, he's not playing support, and he's not even a roaming top laner. He refuses to lane anywhere, instead having an invading game plan right from level 1, stealing a whole side of the enemy's jungle, flashing over walls to gank right as laning begins, and suffocating enemies out of the game. Not only that, but he's done it with a full AP build. So this isn't support Ivan, this is burst Ivan, with Daisy able to run enemies down. Even having Hexflash as a huge part of his game plan, this guy is inventing new strategies everywhere. I did a huge interview with him and found out everything there is to know about how to get Challenger with River Ivern. But first, recently I took some time off due to some health issues but also to propose to my partner, which went amazingly. And it was also my third month using my incredible laptop, the Alienware M18, the sponsor of this video. So I thought I'd do a three month review. First off, the M18 is an 18 inch super portable but also very powerful laptop. And I've been using it for gaming and to make all of the videos for the past three months. I'm a huge fan of it and I can't recommend recommend it enough. Just the specs alone show how insane this laptop can get. Going up to an Intel i9 RTX 4080, 64GB of DDR5 RAM and up to 9TB of storage built in, but it's also customizable for any budget. Mine is perfect for anything I need to use it for, from editing, recording or playing any game. But I gotta say my favourite part is the screen, 165Hz Quad HD, it's cinematic and any game looks great. Of course it's great for League of Legends, this laptop runs it on full settings, perfect FPS, but it also runs AAA games that actually look good on all of the highest settings. I've been playing quite a bit of Starfield and it's shocking how good it looks. Having this powerful of a laptop lets me work or play anywhere, and of course as it's Alienware you have their amazing customer support, so if anything goes wrong they can fix it. This laptop can truly replace a desktop PC for gaming and work, so if you want to get your own M18 check out the link in the description to see all of the options for different budgets and get yours today. Back to Ryvern, a player who started League in Season 6, immediately becoming a supportive and friendly player loving playing Thresh. After hitting gold for the first time, his account was hacked, losing all of his 150 skins and he was set back to square one. This didn't stop him, making a new account, back to Thresh and climbing all the way to Master by season 11. But this is where his champion started to struggle. He needed a new pick to fit the modern meta. His inspiration was actually one of our off-meta videos. He saw the Smite Janna top lane player and he thought he could do it better, with absolutely zero laning, being inspired more by River Shen and simply just playing River Ivern. From then on, nothing was ever the same for him, fully focusing on his teammates, never on himself, using his brain, not his mechanics, to win games. One day in Master, somebody said to him, why do you play like this, just be normal, and they started to flame him. Ryvern responded that one day he'll be challenger and he'll prove that meta doesn't exist. This really inspired him to create a foolproof game plan to completely ignore top lane, instead getting his XP from the enemy jungle, and even doing a full AP build with Night Harvester so he can kill enemies even on this usually supportive pick. With this motivation, from Masters he shot up to Challenger 1075 LP in just 10 days, proving all of his flaming teammates completely wrong. So how does this pick work, and what makes it special? Well it starts in Champ Select, a vital part of the game for River Ivern. He tells his teammates which champions are good or bad with his pick, as Ivern is very OP with some champions, and incredibly useless with others. He wants a melee carry jungler, an early roaming mid laner to help with his invades, and a strong early game AD carry who can fight, ideally also having good scaling. He's queued up for top lane, but when we get in game he doesn't go top lane at all, instead starting the game right away with an invade, always into top side. This is his favourite invade, through Tribush to Krugs. He then takes his Q, and if he finds an enemy he can Q onto them, letting all of his team dash on to them to get the kill, but his main goal with this is to leave a ward on the buff to track where the enemy jungler is starting, as this dictates the rest of his game plan. At this stage he wants to tell his jungler the best clear to work with River Ivern. He wants them to start on top side and clear towards bot lane and dragon, not pathing towards top as it's going to be empty. Now is where his buff stealing starts. Using the ward from level 1, he can see where the enemy jungler started, so he late invades their opposite buff. So if they're starting on the red buff, he rushes to their blue. First he blast cones over to wolves, as this is the first camp the enemy jungler will get to, so he has to mark it first. Then hugging the wall, he queues over to blue buff, marking and smiting, and then marking gromp to prepare it for later. Now he's not just going to wait around for these to be ready,
already, he instead does a super early gank on bot lane, flashing over this wall to gank from behind. It is a very early gank, and almost certain to get at least summoner spells if not a kill, and it's great for Ivern as after he can just go back and collect the camps that he marked. Ideally he wants to get at least one of them and waste the enemy jungler's time, and he can even steal the scuttle crab with smite as well, while his jungler goes to topside so they get double crab. If the enemy starts on blue buff instead, he does the same to red side, steals the buff, marks the other camps and then ganks mid lane, happy to either stay topside and claim the camps, or he can rush to bot lane and use another new strategy, since he's now always flashing over walls to go for ganks. Without it, usually Ivan can struggle to make these ganks work, however our player takes hex flash so he can keep going for these strange angles and surprising enemies. All he has to do is get onto someone and his shield slow and the Q roots will be enough to set up a kill. Ivan's ganks before level 6 are only bad if he can't get in, and hex flash will fix this. His game plan now is very simple, he knows his exact win conditions. One of them is feeding his AD carry, another is invading and destroying the enemy jungler, he can also roam with his mid laner and get them fed, or even just getting lots of kills on Ivern can be a win condition, as he can build full AP and still carry fights. But perhaps the easiest win condition is Dragon Soul. When Dragon spawns at 5 minutes, Ryvern is already there waiting. Ideally he wants to gank bot lane right before to push the enemies away, then creating a free dragon for his jungler and his support, using bushes to hide them taking it. This starts the snowballing super early on, aiming for Dragon Soul to spawn at 20 minutes. This alone is a huge play as it really forces enemies onto a clock. They have to start making plays as they know at 20 minutes they're going to have to take a game changing team fight. He wastes no time at all to set this up, even doing it at level 3. River Ivern's job is just so simple, he can focus on getting every scuttle crab as he can always secure it first with the mark and the smite, and unlike a jungler he doesn't have to focus on 7 different camps every time. The instant that the enemy's buff is back up, Ivan is there, using a bush over the wall to get vision, Q dash over and then mark into smite, even hex flashing away after, he's fully focused on these specific timers, so it's very hard for the enemy jungler to beat him to them, with all the other stuff they have to think about. But we have to talk about the one obvious problem, we all know, it's top lane, but this Ivern simply just doesn't care. His mentality is that even if the enemy top is getting very strong, it doesn't really matter as he's doing so much in bot lane that's way more important. He's removing the enemy jungler from the game, killing their AD carry on repeat to make them useless, and of course getting these dragon stacks. It's a perfect solo queue strategy as the enemy team's morale is going to be so low, it's going to be really hard for their top laner to carry the whole team. And let's not forget, the enemy top laner has to kill your whole team for them to win. Meanwhile he only has to shut them down once, get their huge bounty, and then the game is basically won. So while they have to outplay everyone on your team, you only have to make them make one mistake, and their lead is thrown away. And not only that, but Riot are making tower plates worth less in the next patch. So this split pushing style is getting nerfed, making River Ivan even better. There is one thing he does to slow down the enemy top laner, and that is to deny them from getting Rift Herald. He can solo it himself with Daisy, or just go to it and outsmite the enemy top laner. Ten minutes comes around, the second dragon spawns, and Ivan again is already there. With nothing else to distract him, it's his only focus, continuing to stack. This is also roughly where he gets level 6, a big power spike especially for the AP build, buying a dark seal. Suddenly his ganks are no longer just cheesy angles. He has his ult to chase enemies down, and his team are also all grouped up for these objectives so it's a great time to fight. This is really where you can see the power of this pick, it's not Ivern, it's not roaming, the strength is that he tricks his team into using teamwork. Instead of just farming or playing by themselves, he gets everyone to actively think about grouping for these dragons, so when the fight starts they're already all together ready to take it. Meanwhile it's likely the enemies are still split up playing their own game. Having a team player like this guy literally empowers his team to be better, not only getting his shields but also following his calls, and it just starts to work. Even just contesting a scuttle crab with Ivern in the game, instead of it being just a jungle versus jungle fight, Ryvern and his team are around and ready for it, making it a 3 versus 1, so satisfying for his team and so tilting for the enemy Ringar. And in bot lane, instead of being a 2 versus 2 lane, it's now a 5 versus 2. As the strategy starts to work, it just gets better and better, and this is what differentiates Ryvern from most solo queue players. He never thinks a game is over, although his champion won't 1 versus 9 carry from behind. He always tries to be positive and type about how they can win, and I've seen so many of his games where they're quite far behind, but he brings them back into the game with a good fight where they're all grouped up, and then another good fight and then they end up winning. Even if the enemy top laner is super fed, he reminds his team they don't need to worry about it. He's even happy to let them push to inhibitor. As to Ryvern, that's just an opportunity for his AD carry to get a lot of CS and XP and scale up very fast. It's such a rare mentality in solo queue, only looking at the positives of every situation. When 
20 minutes arrives, Ivan's team has two smites to secure the Dragon Soul. So even if the enemy team are still even, they're really going to struggle to deal with the Daisy running at them, Ivan's shield spam, and the two smites they have to beat. If they can secure this Dragon Soul, the game will be won most of the time, as Ivan has set up a good team comp where he can easily protect all of his carries. In team fights, AP Ivan is still all about letting Daisy go in first, shielding her and teammates on cooldown, not going in himself, keeping a big distance. However, Ivan may seem simple in these fights, but there's really a lot going on, especially if the enemy top laner is scaled up and very strong. Here's a great example. Ivan starts playing outside the enemy's range, timing Daisy with a high damage shield as the enemies group up in a choke point. He traps them inside the dragon pit, and then he slows down to play with his carry, shielding them and giving them a line of bushes for them to retreat to. While his team does the DPS, his job is to protect them and attempt to root a high value enemy. He forces the Rengar to die to Baron by putting him in a bad spot. He even makes a mistake by overextending, but he knows his flash is up so he can get out to safety, not even giving enemies a small win in these fights. This fight was a 4 vs 4 and they end it with 4 people still alive. This is the fight control that Ivern can have. But let's talk about the huge downside of this strategy. When this strategy goes wrong, it goes very wrong. If he's denied a buff at level 1, or he dies early on, he won't be as far ahead and his goal has to change. He must play to distract the enemy jungler, wasting their time and trying to counter gank them wherever possible. Instead of creating opportunities, he kind of has to go into safety mode to avoid his accounts getting banned. Due to the current ban system, he can't keep taking risks and actually trade his life for things that would give his team an advantage. Even if he makes a good play from behind, this can lead to more and more deaths. And he has been banned twice for doing this strategy, sacrificing his life and his death score to try and win the game. Both times after Riot reviewed the games, he was unbanned after only a day. So the strategy does have a pretty big downside, but he's never intentionally losing any of these games. And even Riot agree he doesn't deserve to get banned for them, it's just a limitation of the punishment system. So to rate this pick, yes it is quite high risk, but since this player is so consistent, these terrible games aren't common. It's much more common he follows his game plan, uses teamwork, staying level headed and then winning the game. And that is how he got to challenger, learning from every loss. He does recommend for any new River Ivern player to play with a duo, especially below Master Elo. He recommends playing with a jungler so you can synergize, and when the strategy starts to work, your teammates will start to be convinced a lot easier. One thing to definitely not forget is to ban Rengar. Rengar has great synergy with Ivern, so unfortunately against him he still has great synergy, getting the free bushes for free jumps, and Ivern cannot 1v1 him. One thing that does help is the full AP build, going the damage jungle item every game, cooldown reduction boots, dark seal to start stacking, rushing night harvester for very high damage on daisy and the shield, upgrading to medjires, and finishing the build with hextech alternator into horizon focus. But more recently he started a new build that's very smart, taking anathema's chains instead and placing it on the enemy top laner. This means that throughout the game he can dominate the bot side of the map, and then buy this item to deal with the only lane he hasn't destroyed yet. For runes he actually takes this dark harvest page, really good for snowballing and even higher unexpected damage. Our player would love to pass on his message of positivity and staying open to new ideas in League. Especially on a champion like Ivern, you have to fight to the end of the game and never surrender, as any game is winnable. He's now playing on EUS Master Tier on a new account, and streaming his climb back to Challenger in the new split. Link in the description. Thanks again to Alienware for sponsoring this video, please check out their amazing M18 at the link in the description, my favourite laptop. And as always, thank you so much for watching.